Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to consider a special scenario where we have a flat file which contains table those need to be truncated before we load them again. We need to create an SSIS package that can read the list of table names with schema from that flat file and then truncate them in a given database in SSIS package. Once uh, they are truncated, we have a data flow task to load them. But in this package, we are going to learn only how to truncate them. And uh, especially we will be reading uh, the table name and schema from a flat file and uh, just use uh, those uh, table name and schema names and build our query for truncation. And uh, we are not really going to go and uh, use data flow task and load them you can go ahead and use it but this part will be only dealing with the reading the schema name and the table names from a flat file and build the dynamic query to truncate each of them now on the right side what we have here we will learn how to create ssis package from scratch how to read list of tables from flat file uh, those need to be truncated from SQL Server table. Uh, this will uh, we uh, one thing uh, I'm missing here. I will be reading uh, the schema name as well with the table names. Now the next third uh, third point is how to create a string type variable in SSIS package. We want to create a variable in which uh, we will be using the schema name and table name that we will extract and build our query. Four is the write expressions on a variable to build a SQL statement. And five is how to use SQL query, a dynamic SQL saved in a variable that we have built and uh, how we will use that one in execute SQL task. So let's uh, take a look uh, and uh, learn these uh, steps uh, one by one. Now, what I have here, I have a, a, a text file with the schema name and table name. So I have schema, DBO and customer AF. This is a first record and then we have sales schema and then we have customer underscore NA and same goes for sale, sales schema and we have customer underscore AS. So these are the tables with schema we have saved in a flat file. We want to read that information and then truncate these table before we load them. Let's close this one now go to the tables here are the tables uh, in my test database so if i run that one these are return me two records uh, each of them uh, let's uh, go to ssdt or bids uh, and create a package to truncate these tables now right click on the pro project whatever the project you have created uh, and then here you will see ssis packages right click here new ssis package it will create a new SSIS package for you. Rename this one. We can call it package truncate tables from flat file. You can give any proper name what you like. But in my case, I'm going to give that. First of all, we need to read the data from a flat file. We will be using the data flow task here. And uh, let's rename this one. We call it DFT read table list from flat file it is good idea to give proper name so you would know that which task is doing what now we will be using a source in the source we will be using a flat file source because we are reading the data from the flat file or text file create a new connection browse to the file so we browse to the truncate tables.txt here first uh, column names in the first data row that's correct let's go to the columns and see okay all everything is read correctly I have column delimiter that's a comma and I, I have a row delimiter that's the carriage return line feed so it read everything correctly in your case if you have something different let's say you have a pipe sign or other uh, co column delimiters you can select as per required so now Let's go to the advanced. It read the, each of them as a var car or string 50. That's fine with this. And uh, table name is also the same way. Excuse me. So we are fine with that. We can preview the data. And now hit OK. 
retain null values from the source as null values in the data flow that means if you are getting some blank values and you want to read them as uh, null you will click this one so that's not possible in our case if a value is blank that means we don't really want to read that but well, you can click according to your requirement i'm going to leave this one as it is it's not applicable in my case so click on columns next part we need to save these schema and table names in somewhere so we can use them i'm going to save this information into the record set destination so here i will be saving this one in the variable in the record set destination i will use the object type variable that can save the information or the list of the tables or or the data set in the memory so we will create a new variable we called it table list and we call it obj obj object type so this is going to be object type it can handle more than one row and it can have multiple columns uh, you can call it it can save a table in the memory so that's what we are going to do and here let's uh, select that and we have table list object variable input columns we are selecting schema and table and let's uh, refresh and hit ok now the data is saved in the memory next part what we need to do to read that data one by one and then use it so we are going to use the for each loop container here and then we are going to read one row at a time and then use that here we will be using in the for each loop we have different type of enumerators so here we will be using ADO uh, for each ADO enumerator. So click on that one. Here we will select the object type variable and then save the values to the variables. So in the variables, we will hit here new variable and we could call it schema name. And next, so index is selected zero because this is the first uh, column. So it is uh, starting with zero. And then we have to get the other one so we'll call it a table name so we have schema name and table name and we saved in two variables so in each of the iteration uh, those values uh, will be saved uh, in these uh, variables for each of the row and then hit ok next uh, we want to create a new variable and uh, i'm going to call this one a sql query why i'm creating this one uh, I'm creating this one because I want to build this truncation query depending on the variable we call it uh, for schema name and a table name so I want to create a, a query of, that I can use in the execute SQL task here what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go to the SQL query and build my query here so I put double quotes here and then say truncate table truncate table and then we have to provide uh, the schema what I'm going to do first of all I have to put double quotes uh, and then here we will provide schema name with the plus sign sorry so provide the plus sign schema name and this work fine now as, as of now we don't have any value in the schema name what we can do we can put some uh, test values so we can call it test schema so we see if the expressions are working correctly and test table this will be overwritten when we run our SSIS package because the values will be coming from the for each loop and saved in these variables so they will be overwritten right now just for the expressions I'm writing it here so you can see that now we have a truncate table table name we have to put a dot here so double quotes dot double quotes and then you pl use plus sign and then you can use the table name and uh, that's uh, how our query will look like uh, by using those values you can always put uh, the parentheses as well because sometimes there is a possibility your 
maybe schema has a space in them in or your table has a space in the name so that uh, will be taken care and we have to use plus sign here double quotes parenthesis double quotes so that's how we will put the parenthesis now we have truncate table and schema dot table name everything looks good next part uh, as our query is ready by using those variables and each time the variable values will be changing in the for each loop so each time we will have new truncation query for a new table or a record here we will be using execute sql task inside and then we will truncate those tables here we use a new connection and i know my tables are in the test database so i select test you can create a new one i have already existing so i'm going to use that one uh, if you are creating a new one uh, connection manager uh, you will be providing sql server instance name and database name that's all you need to do here in the direct input uh, we are getting the value or query from the variable so we use uh, the variable so we are going to provide the variable name we call it query sql query and that's it we are not returning anything it's just truncating the table so hit ok now we call it I'm gonna name it ESQL truncate table and here also you can go ahead and say for each loop container and say read schema name and table name from a table list obg so that helps uh, on while you debug uh, or uh, even uh, you know test your package or uh, because sometimes packages are lengthy and you forget like what this data flow task is doing there are, if you have 10 data flow task and each one say data flow one two three you would never know which uh, data flow is loading what uh, or which uh, uh, for each loop is doing what so it's good idea to give them proper name and it helps now we know that uh, these tables have some data and uh, we are reading their schema and uh, um, table name from a file and we want to truncate them so that's it let's go and run our package and see if it works the package completed successfully and uh, let's go and take a uh, here you can read some information how many re uh, rows are read uh, in the records at destination and all that now let's go and check uh, the tables so all of the tables are tr uh, truncated uh, correctly now what we learn here the major part of that is how to use the record set destination when you have to read the values from some flat file or excel file and then you need to build your query by using those variable values that you have extracted in the for each loop then how to use expressions and then how to use the variable uh, that has uh, your query inside the execute SQL task so these are important points maybe this video or scenario does not make sense like okay why we would uh, read the table name and schema name from a flat file and what is the need yeah they, they, this uh, scenario can be very limited as uh, the scope of uh, this can be very limited but uh, the thing is uh, the goal is to show you how to build your query how to use uh, expressions to build your query and uh, in the variables uh, and then use that variable in the uh, execute sql task uh, and use other components such as uh, we use the records at destination for each loop uh, and uh, execute sql task uh, um, in ssis so once you know different scenarios uh, you learn the different techniques uh, your vision will be broader and you can implement uh, the different solutions and different tasks in your real time thanks very much for watching this video and i will see you next video